I'm Donna Visman with Williamson Source, and today we're here at the Franklin Theater for the Obor College of Design Lecture Series. We're here with one of the speakers today, Garo Kedigan. Hi. You're from New York. <laughs> Originally from Montreal, but I live in New York now. Yep. So you missed the blizzard. I missed the blizzard, thankfully. We came in uh, a day early. We were supposed to come last night, and we panicked in the last minute and took a flight in early. So have you talked to your friends in New York? How's it going up there? Well, you know, they, they hype everything, of course. <laughs> and I spoke to two of my assistants this morning who have taken every opportunity not to come into work. And I looked it up on the Weather Channel and it said seven inches of snow instead of what they said previously, 24 inches. So. <laughs> oh, just a little embellishment there, right? <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, that's how it is in New York. <laughs> So tell me, you've been here for a few days. What do you think about the South? Is this your first time here? It's first time in Tennessee, and I'm actually, I have to say, I'm really impressed. People are so sophisticated, so friendly, so nice. And, you know, Franklin especially has really spoken to me. It's a beautiful little town, and the Omore College is wonderful. I mean, what a beautiful setting for, for design students to be in such a small, you know, inspired environment. And I, I was saying, actually, to the president of the, of the, of the college yesterday that I went to McGill, and <clears throat> McGill University was actually a small architecture program. It was 30 students per, per year. And they're so lucky because now I see all my assistants and things in New York, they come out of these gigantic architecture schools and they don't even know their professors. You know, whereas, you know, we, we went to the lecture yesterday and Bobby McAlpine is friendly with one of the professors and of course all the professors have personal relationships with the clients. I mean, it's, that's just a unique thing that's, you know, it's, it's lost today. So. But we have it here. Yeah. Because we like to keep things personal. <laughs> Which is wonderful. I've seen uh, several of your pieces that, that have been published, and I love them. I've noticed that a lot of them are all one color. You seem to do all the walls, <laughs> one color, Yes. molding to molding. Absolutely. Tell us about that process. Well, I think color and color theory is really important. And I think that when you render a room, I think a room doesn't necessarily have to be accented by uh, many colors. I think if the room is strong architecturally, then you use one color to sort of render it. Especially in my living room. I don't know if you know the house beautiful issue. And I had that vision for that room in my mind for a few years. And it was, um, it was brown paper bag. I don't know if you know the Bloomingdale's bag. I kept the Bloomingdale's bag by my desk for three months while I was working on my apartment. I kept showing my painter. I'm like, this is the color. This is what I want. <laughs> and the reason for that was really because that color to me almost feels like it could be any kind of material. It could be wood. It could be plaster. It could be. So it really rendered the room beautifully in sort of a timeless language. And it sort of interprets itself in many different iterations, different types of light, different times of the day. So. And I painted the whole room one, one color. I love it. And there we go. Inspiration by a brown paper bag <laughs> by Caro. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank it's you so, so much. I nice really to have it. you thank here. You for me. I'm glad you like the Southerners, and we hope you come back. Love it. I will be back for sure. All thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs>